Hello. Mimi, do you want to start? Yeah. Yes, Mama. Yes. yes it's okay. 10 okay. All right. Okay. Start, no? Yeah. Thank so, um, can I uh, just say um, a few words about Mimi, right? Um, thank you all for coming. It's really exciting to see all of you. And um, I'm the moderator for this session. And I would like to say a few words about Teacher Mimi. Actually, Teacher Mimi doesn't need an introduction. Right? We all know her and we all love her. And I have to say that it's actually uh, Teacher Mimi. Uh, she, this, this conference would not have happened if it hadn't been for her relentless effort and her enthusiasm and her motivation. Right? She, this is her brainchild, to tell you the truth. Right? And uh, so uh, she has been around the ELTC for a long time. And she's a teacher trainer, a very good teacher trainer, as well as uh, um, a real good professional in this field of education. So I, as I said, I don't really need to introduce her. And we have worked together along in the university. Uh, Mimi has worked at the university and she we used to work together at the British Council as well. And now we're also working for their MMT so. So teacher Mimi, without further ado, I would like to hand over to you, okay? Thank you very much, teacher Khan, for very kind words. Okay, so let me start with the screen sharing. So Mingalava, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all the colleagues around the world. I am Mimi, and this is the topic that I'm talking about today. Bridging the digital divide in the context of education in Myanmar, realities and possibilities. Firstly, I'd like to tell you that this is not a report of a scholarly research. This is merely an outcome of my personal um, inquiry based learning interest. And in this workshop, in this presentation, I'm not going to define the term digital divide because I'm sure you all have understood the definition of digital divide. And I'm going to use the terms um, online learning, e learning, digital learning, or uh, mobile learning. Or, you know, I'm going to use these terms interchangeably in this talk. So, shall we start? Yes, teacher. Okay. All right. Okay. So, firstly, uh, let's look at the rationale behind my my topic. Okay. Why uh, this bridging the digital divide is important for us, and let's look at uh, some quotes from an ADV. So this is, okay, let me read it out for you quite quickly, only one sentence. Closing the digital divide and infrastructure gap in developing Southeast Asia will help ensure the recovery from the pandemic. And, okay, it is from ADB, Asia, Asian Development Bank, 2020, October issue. And we have similar ideas described in many reports by other organizations such as uh, World Bank or UNICEF or UNESCO. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm sure you would agree that bridging the digital divide, at least not closing, it's important to recover from the socioeconomic problems caused by the pandemic. So that's about the rationale for this talk. And now the next part is the what. And here I'm talking about the realities. I'm talking about the facts. So firstly, I like to talk a bit about Myanmar. I'm not going to spend too much time, but I'm going to give you some scenario of what we are having in the current uh, time, in the current situation. So we have a population of 54.6 million uh, in Myanmar. And um, if you are interested, I can give you that GDP is 2.9% as of 2019 figures. And per capita income is 
1,400 US dollars. So that's about our country. And the next point, this is important. Electrification or electricity supply. And you can see it's 54% for the whole country, the rate. Which means half of the country, almost half of the country is still in the dark. We are still in the dark age in the 21st century. So this is an important thing because we need to consider when we are thinking about possibilities. This is a reality and based on that, we'll think about what we can do possibly for, for ourselves in the future. Connected to this, uh, this is good news, mobile connections. 126% of the to total population, we are connected on mobiles which means some of us have got more than one mobile connections, more than we are using more than one um, mobile service providers. So this is one good news, over 100%. And the internet user, 22 million as of January, 2020. And you can imagine uh, uh, what do we use most? We mostly use Facebook and the Facebook user is like, uh, let me read it out. We have uh, um, okay, 27 million of people are using Facebook in this country. So this is the background or the landscape or the backdrop of our country of Myanmar. Now, let me move on to a bit more in detail to look at education in Myanmar. And again, I'm not going to bore you with facts and figures, very brief. Okay, this is the number of students we have, the whole country, basic education, which means primary and secondary, also tertiary, 10.8 million. And again, okay, the schools, uh, both primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions have been closed since March 2020, uh, the time when we had the first confirmed cases of the COVID-19. Uh, of course, uh, for a few weeks in July, uh, some high schools and secondary schools were opened, but it was only for a few weeks. And we will not be able to reopen the schools until and unless the whole country has been vaccinated and that's the policy for our country now. And okay, so what is uh, MOE, Myanmar uh, Ministry of Education is doing now uh, during this COVID-19 to help us students and teachers. We have got this COVID response and recovery plan in education issued by uh, Ministry of Education in collaboration with UNESCO. And the focuses in this plan are re um, well-being for teachers and students and reassumption of face-to-face uh, -face learning and, and training for teachers and students in the digital skills and uh, community uh, engagement. So these are the main focuses uh, mentioned in this plan. So in the meanwhile, what are we doing? Uh, the teachers around the world, uh, sorry, in this country, in the can uh, around the country, are being given the digital skills training. But again, I ask my friends, some of them are taking the training, some of them have taken the training, some of them haven't. So I think it will come face by face. So it is happening now. Uh, the digital skills in basic like LMS, uh, learning management system, some basic uh, training for all the teachers. This is happening now, but uh, not all the teachers have completed the training. And we also have lessons um, and workshops. Uh, on free-to-air radio, FM channel, and TV. But one interesting thing is I talk to my friends and my colleagues and I ask them very casually, hey, do you know 
or do you watch uh, these radio programs and TV programs uh, broadcast on uh, free to air, free to air on radio and TV? Some of them say, we don't even know that, okay, they are being broadcast. And, we, and some people say, oh, we know, but we don't have time. And some people say, we don't want to watch them. They are not good for us. I have no comments, but of course, these are the things happening in our country. So things uh, that we are doing to prepare ourselves for the um, uh, post-COVID era. So this is about education. So there are the realities happening in our country. The landscape, the backdrop of Myanmar and the education sector in our country in Myanmar. Now, the how. How is, of course, for me, this is the possibilities. So as I said, I talked to my friends over the phone, over the chat box uh, in Facebook very casually. I asked them, what could be the best way for us to get ready for this post pandemic era in education? And we have got some ideas. So these are the voices from my friends. I didn't talk to many people, only about 10 people or 15 people the most and they have very similar ideas and I have noted down their ideas here. So some of them said infrastructure. We don't have in infrastructure good enough for the for the uh, online teaching and learning. So okay, they say that okay there should be a better infrastructure uh, to have uh, to implement to have the online teaching and learning implemented. And this one Okay, as I said in the previous slide, okay, the electrification rate, 54% for the whole country. So all of them, all of my friends that I talked to, they said, we don't have electricity. How can we have online learning? This is not possible. So they had the same idea and that no electricity, no online learning. So that's their voices. And again, they are also saying that we don't have devices, we don't have laptops, we don't have computers, we don't have mobile phones. But looking at the data, okay, 126% of us are using the mobile phones. So, okay, things to think about. And connectivity. Yes, people are saying that ah, oh, connection is not good in this country. What can we do? Okay, we cannot rely on the connection. Okay, we cannot do online, digital. Okay, forget it. There's no connection, no online. Okay, I have no comments. And okay, people are saying that teachers are not ready for the online teaching because they don't have any training, they don't have any experience. Firstly, do the training for the teachers and learn they be ready for the online so this is another voice okay and this also very interesting uh someone said okay there should be clearer guidelines and a good communication system so i started to think does it mean that there are no clear guidelines i don't know it's a good area to investigate in the education management studies and okay many of them say the same thing all, all of them, the people that I talked to, the 10 or 15 of them, we need support from MOE, Ministry of Education. There should be support from the ministry. There should be support from the government. So they, these are the voices of my friends, my colleagues. They think they are the things that we need to have this online teaching and learning to uh, bridge the digital divide in this country. Okay, all right. I didn't argue with them. I agree with them totally. Now, this is the local concerns, and I'd like to move on to the global measures. What others are doing around the world? Okay, so let's see. In countries such as Jamaica, Argentina, South America, they have introduced zero rated educational websites, which means they are totally free. And in some places, uh, the government have provided internet plan subsidiary to teachers and students uh, as a means for bridging the digital divide. 
And in this country, Rwanda, Kenya, they waived internet charge for the people in education, for teachers, students. And in Bhutan, they have ad additional data package to the students. In Kenya, they have this loom project. They have balloons, big balloons, flying or in different places, carrying 4G stations. And um, it means people can uh, take the connection from these stations and they can do this online learning. And in Croatia, Egypt, free internet access to students. And in the Dominican Republic, free Wi-Fi hotspots. And even in the US, okay, of course they are rich. The students, not in all states, but in some states, uh, students are provided with personal gadgets and they have set routers on school passes. So wherever the school passes go, they can have they can be connected to the Wi-Fi and you know things and they can they can keep on learning. So these are some of the examples uh, which are being done uh, uh, in other institutions in other countries. So comparing the local concerns and the global measures, I started to think, okay, this is also a possibility and just my ideas, my pea brain, my two cent ideas. So let's see what I have got. So looking at the local ideas, people are talking about infrastructure development and electricity shortage. Yes, of course, we, we do need them. But I look around myself, our country in the Southern hemisphere, we have the luxury of abundant sunshine throughout the year. And right now we are depending on hydropower for electricity. So why can't we have the solar power uh, to, to solve this problem. Of course, initial investment can be high, but again, what I think is, can we have the community, community development, uh, so community engagement, like villages, households, families, ship in the cost, and the ministry working together and trying to have some solar panels or the infrastructure for the school, at least for the school, or at least for the daytime, so that students can continue learning. The infrastructure and electric, electricity shortage may be solved. The problem for this may be solved. I'm not a technician. I don't know anything about electricity supply or energy, but this is just, as I said, my big brain idea. And later I want to hear from you, your ideas. And lack of devices, of course. Of course, not many people, not all of us have got the mobile, uh, sorry, the laptops, but we have mobiles. I think now many people, most people have got the mobile phones. So if we can have the mobile applications for the online learning, could this be possible for the students to continue learning? This is what I'm thinking. So collaboration again, collaboration between technology and pedagogy not pedagogy only we will teach this way no online no teaching no i think we can we can find ways to uh, address this problem this uh, shortage connectivity the same okay so the enterprises can work together with the ministry and the local communities and we can we can find ways to have better connectivity around the country and of course, the next one, training, this is important for us. Okay, and we have been pointing hands, fingers at the ministry. The ministry not giving training to us. But look at me, look at myself. Okay, at the beginning of this COVID-19, um, I started to think for myself. That time, many of my classes uh, were canceled or postponed. So I had a lot of time. So. I thought, oh, this is a good time for me to train myself, to teach myself new skills. And I look for opportunities and I attended some courses, some short courses. Uh, I'm not that ambitious, not, not that uh, hardworking. So, but again, I learned some new skills. And this is uh, looking for opportunities and trying to um, uh, do things for ourselves. So I think this can also happen to, to many of us. 
We cannot wait for the Ministry of Education, the government, to do things for us. And another thing, that's why uh, I am saying this, we need to help ourselves. This is my message. Um, so the saying is, we help ourselves by helping others. And here I would like to add one more sentence for this. We can help ourselves to help others. So look at my case. Um, personally, I have a thousand and one phobias and technophobia is one of my biggest phobias. And I am a um, digital immigrant, but I step one, I took one step further. I try to learn new things. I try to accept things as they are. I try to help my, I try to help myself so that I can help others. And we are having this conference, this online conference because of this. Our country, Myanmar, is a poor country, of course. Okay, we are underdeveloped or developing and we are low income country and we are poor. I'm not ashamed to say, to say that. But of course, we can do it. This conference is the, it's the proof, it's the manifestation that we can bridge the digital divide and we can make a change in education if we want to. Candy G said, be the change you want to see in the world. So we need to help ourselves to help others. So my question is, do you also think or do you agree that we can bridge the digital divide? Do you think we can turn realities into possibilities? My questions to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Teacher Me. That was really brilliant, Teacher Me. Um, Thank you. We really enjoy it. It's very informative. Thank you so much. Oh. Th th these are the two articles that I referred to, mainly referred to, and the image credit here. So I will stop here now. And I'd like to hear your thoughts, your, your answers for my question. Here is uh, here are some questions. Um, can I read out one or two questions to you, Mimi? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, one is uh, the chair Emu is asking the possible yeah. ways to give equal education to very remote area. So any, um, I mean, what's your take on this? The ways we can give equal education. Thank you very much, teacher Emu. Yes, inclusion is a key factor in education everywhere around the world. Yes, um, uh, I think, uh, again, okay, we are thinking about community engagement and it's also mentioned in this COVID uh, response and recovery plan. So I think there should be some kind of engagement. There should be collaboration. So uh, those living in the remote areas, they cannot just sit and wait for the government, the ministry to do something. But of course, the government and the ministry uh, we we'll say, oh, they are too far, too remote. Okay, I will, we will do things for them later. No, there should be collaboration. The, the effort should be well synchronized and it should be well concerted, well orchestrated. Then I think we can have inclusion. Thank you. And then somebody's, uh, some teachers asking about whether they could join, what's the platform for the um, platform for LMS for teachers? All right. Um, I think, okay, I think in our group, some of you might have attended the courses here. Um, and they, okay, because I have also seen photos of my colleagues attending the courses, uh, LMS, uh, uh, and I talked to some of them, and they say that it's being run by the Ministry of Education in collaboration mm -hmm. with Tech. Taxila University and it's free. And so far, the, the teachers from the private sector have been attending that course. I don't know for the private sector teachers. I think it is coming to you. And if you want to know more about this, I can find out more information for you and I'll come back to you later. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
maybe in a chat box or in my private chat box or in the MMT sort chat box. Um, there is one more question. Do you have time for one more? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you that as well. But here, teacher Nui A asked that, um, do you think that lessons through social media like Facebook will be more effective than radio or TV lessons? Uh, yes, okay. Um, yes, um, uh, when we look at the, the data, uh, the, the Facebook user in this country, 27%, uh, sorry, 27 million of us are using Facebook. So yes, okay, we can, we can have this, okay. And Ministry of Education, uh has got their own facebook page uh how many of you uh have logged into moe facebook they do have announcements regular announcements uh for the training and you know for things do you know that yeah so i what okay the answer is yes it's very possible it's very possible but of course we need self-discipline mm -hmm. for me when i for me, okay, uh, I am easily distracted. When I log onto the computer, I start to uh, log into Facebook and I look at my friends, uh, whose birthday today is it and who is getting married. And uh, the last thing I do is going to the educational website. So don't do like this. Don't, don't follow my, my, my way of learning. Okay, so go, go to the education website first. Otherwise you will lose your data. Yes, do we, do we have more questions? Um, no, I think that's all. Um, many of them say thank you. Yeah, they all say thank you. So thank you very much to you all. Thank you very much for listening to me.